John Hamill is the CEO and co-founder of a Dundalk-based software company called Venetics Limited. He's also on the executive committee of Atheist Ireland for a number of years and he's secretary of the International Atheist Alliance. And he's with me on Late Lunch today. John, thanks for dropping in for a chat. Not at all, Jerry. Delighted to be here. Good to see you. I've been introducing you. Well, I've been promoing you and talking about you on the show all day as the man who believes in nothing. I'm sorry about that. I was only trying to, you know, I know the little hooks in this game, but Uh you do, of course, believe in lots of things. But let's talk about atheism. Sure. What is atheism? Well, uh, a number of people have a number of different definitions. Uh, Some people define atheism as a lack of belief in gods and nothing else and others define a stronger um, position, which was uh, a belief that there are no gods. Um, And there are a number of things that follow from that then. If you believe there are no gods, you therefore believe that your morality is derived from natural sources rather than from revealed truths. So as you say, um, it's not quite accurate to say atheists don't believe in anything. We believe in lots and lots of things. We just don't believe in the supernatural. So let's begin at the beginning. The majority of people have a faith in a God of different shades in this world. Yourself yes. and the people termed atheist or non-believers uh-huh. are probably a, a much, much smaller group, really. So what's it all about, Alfie? What's this life? Well, who are you? Who am I? Where did we come from? Well, yeah, I think um, my view of the world is that the uh, the universe was created through natural processes. Uh, Christians believe that the universe was created by an invisible character called Yahweh. Hindus believe the universe was created by an invisible character called Shiva. Uh, we could continue down this line, and anthropologists have prov- uh, de- described 2,800 different gods in the world. And all of these religions have their own uh, creation myths. And some of them are very interesting stories, but they all can't be true. And uh, I'm sure your Christian listeners, for example, know exactly what it's like to not believe in the Hindu creation myth. And in fact, not believe in the other 2,799 myths out there apart from their own. So atheists just go one god further and we don't believe in any of them. But would you not think with all those different shades, uh-huh. there's something. You know, there is, if you look at the singular god, and they're all different shades of it on this little globe we inhabit here. Uh, well, yeah, it's something you hear quite often that uh, maybe there's just one god and he's been given lots of different names by lots of different people. Um, I, I happen to think that's just not a coherent way to think. I mean, if it was true, this would be a pretty strange character. For a start, he's told the Christians that all the Jews are going to hell, and he's told the Muslims that all the Christians are going to hell, and he's given a lot of these groups uh, pretty clear instructions to be less than charitable to, to each other. So if that kind of God did exist, he doesn't sound like the kind of God that I want to worship. Did you establish this viewpoint of yours from a very young age? Were you born in any tradition? I was. uh, My parents were and remain devout and pious Catholics. So I grew up a a Catholic and um, uh, it was only later in life after a long series of uh, doubts that kind of grow and grow and grow over a number of years where I eventually decided to give uh, all of that up. I think most um, atheists would come to atheism, certainly in this country, from that kind of background. There's very few, as as you said yourself, very few people in Ireland who would be raised um, as atheists. And actually, I don't raise my kids as atheists. I let them make up their own mind. Um, I would be grateful, actually, if their school would do them the same courtesy, which uh, it doesn't, unfortunately, uh, like most Catholic schools in the country. Um, But the the particular moment of uh, revelation, if you like, for me came from an interview that I saw with Penn Jillette, you know, the uh, comedian magicians, uh, uh, Penn and Teller. Mm. So Penn Jillette's an an atheist. And um, uh, I had a period in my life when I was uh, had a lot of doubts about all the stuff that I was hearing from the pulpit. And I saw an interview with Penn Jillette. who recommended to those who are having doubts about Christianity to just go and read the Bible. And that's what I did. And I skipped the Old Testament, I picked up the New Testament, and I read it from cover to cover. And that made my mind up very quickly. Because if, if, if you think of the Christian story, the Christian narrative is that um, Yahweh created the universe, and then he waited around for 14 billion years doing nothing <clears throat> until humans evolved. 
which was around 200,000 years ago. And after humans evolved, then he waited a further 190,000 years watching all the humans do horrible things to each other. Uh, oh, look, that tribe's murdering that tribe. And oh, look, those uh, those tribe are, are killing the children of that tribe over there. And Yahweh watched all of this while doing absolutely nothing. Um, and then a few thousand years ago, he gave us a book. And uh, if you think that story is true, what a book that would be. Eh? Here, here's the creator of a hundred billion galaxies, each with a hundred billion stars. He's been waiting 14 billion years to give us his thoughts on life. And he's given us a book. And if you pick it up and read it, it is dross. It is deeply and profoundly boring. There are a few parts of it which are interesting. Um, so there's the golden rule, do unto others as uh, you would have them do unto you. Um, that's interesting. I mean, it had existed long before Christ. That was clearly plagiarized. Uh, there are some parts of it which are just deeply immoral. But in general, it is just an incredibly boring book. And um, I very quickly came to the conclusion that really this is much more likely to be written by a bunch of Iron Age cave dwellers from the desert than it is by the creator of the universe. Would you say the same about the Koran? Yes. Exactly the same. You could be in trouble for that, you know that? Well, you could be in trouble for that and saying the same thing about the, the yeah, Bible. Yeah, Christians would take insult from you, but you know, at times with the Quran you can't say anything about it at all, and you know, it really stirs well, up a horse. Uh, bl blasphemy is legal in this country, mm. it doesn't matter which, uh, which religion you blaspheme. Yeah, I do know that. Let me say this to you. Time is a very difficult concept to mm -hmm. get your head around. You know, you mentioned all those billions of years, etc. Uh -huh. Galaxy, space is yeah. very difficult to get your head and around as well. Hold on a minute. Are you telling me that the majority of people that inhabit this planet have got it wrong? That the main fates have it wrong? Why is there fate? Why do people believe? So, uh, yes, most people have um, have been wrong for most of human history. So uh, if you look at the people who wrote uh, the Bible, I was talking to um, a friend of mine in the States recently, and we happened to be talking about uh, the temptation of Christ in the desert. And there's one part of that story where the devil brings Jesus to the top of a highest mountain, and he tells him to look all around and say, everything that you can see can be yours. Uh, what a moron. The, these people clearly thought the entire world consisted of a few thousand miles around the Mediterranean. Imagine, imagine talking to the creator of the universe and trying to tempt him with a few thousand miles of land around the Mediterranean. That's the most low ball offer ever anyone has ever given in any negotiation. But of its time, remember, like the world would have been restricted. The, the, your horizons were limited. People didn't have travel. They didn't realize the world was round. Well, people, people's horizons were limited, but you presume gods weren't. So um, if you're explaining the Bible in the context of a book written by a bunch of cave dwellers in the desert during the Iron Age, that makes sense. But it's supposed to be the word of God. But let me suggest that that was an analogy. You know, it was, you know what I mean, to be given to people to say, you know, you know, look at this. You, you know, you couldn't just take in everything else you're talking about when that wasn't like that at that time. Well, I disagree. There's lots and lots of things that you could have said at the time, um, which would have been massively insightful. Uh, Professor Jerry Coyne is an evolutionary biologist. He suggested uh, several. So there could have been a line in the Bible, if it was divinely inspired, that said something like, uh, the secret of life is two strands entwined. Imagine you were reading that today, Jerry, and you thought, how could someone 2,000 years ago have known that? Or what, what if you said something like, um, uh, the earth circles the sun as an apple rolling around the tree. And you would think, how would these people have known that 2,000 years ago? But actually, when you read the book, there's nothing in there that a shepherd in the Iron Age didn't know. Whoever wrote the Bible was... Um, if, if you had the, the, the authors of the Bible today to talk to any junior cert class in this country, they would be by far the most ignorant person in the room. Uh, yeah, but you're talking about stepping on, you know, what, over 
2016 years later, more maybe perhaps, you know, and you have to take it up at time. I want to take a short break. Okay. Go nowhere. John Hamill is with us on Late Lunch. The Late Lunch with Black... Uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. John Hamill, uh, an atheist, is with me on Late Lunch this afternoon. Jerry, will you ask that man, does he think the devil or evil exists? Uh, well, I don't think the, the devil exists. I'm cer certain that there's uh, evil acts in the world and there's good acts in the world. And what that reminds me of actually is a, a famous quote from uh, the Nobel winning scientist Steven Weinberg. Uh, what he said is, with and without religion, there will always be good people who do good things and bad people who do bad things. But if you need a good person to do an evil thing, you'll need religion. Uh, and that rings true to me. Oh, that's a quote I've never heard before. I'm going to ponder on that when I have time a little bit later on. Let me ask you this. Are you not despondent in that you don't believe in anything, that you feel... You were born here, you're going to live your lifespan, wherever that is, and you'll be gone and never heard or seen of again. Absolutely not. Uh, uh, quite, uh, it, it gives me quite the opposite of despondence. It gives me uh, a greater focus, I think, on the life that we have, which is, I think, the only life that we have. So I want to make the best of it uh, when I'm here. I want to leave something behind me for my kids that's better than I had uh, when, uh, when I was young. So um, I don't seek to um, ignore or disparage anything in this life uh, with a view to making up for it in, uh, in an imagined afterlife. And um, I'm not particularly keen on some of the ideas of the afterlife uh, either. I mean, you mentioned how difficult it is to get your head around the idea of infinity. Um, imagine existing forever and never, ever being able to turn it off if you like um, that's a pretty scary thought um, especially if the Catholics are right imagine existing forever if you had to hang around with Padre Pio and Mother Teresa the whole time doesn't sound like much of a party to me Jerry God it's a big party for an awful lot of people I'm sure listening today but you're entitled to your views <laughs> does that man celebrate Christmas well I doubt you celebrate do you celebrate any of the <clears throat> of course I celebrate Christmas uh, Christmas is an entirely pagan um, celebration which has been uh, hijacked by the Christians. So if you look up Jeremiah chapter 10 in the Bible, uh, there's a prohibition on Christmas trees in the Bible. And the reason is that Christmas trees were a pagan tradition long before uh, the Christians came along. So holly wreaths are uh, a Wiccan tradition. Uh, Yule logs come from a Norse god called Yule. Uh, Christmas trees are a pagan tradition. And um, what day is today? Today is uh, Thursday, is it? Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh, well, uh, tomorrow's Thursday then, uh, Jerry. That's named after the god Thor. Are you, are you going to avoid Thursdays if you don't believe in Thor? No. Well, I, I don't have to So you celebrate Christ. Christmas? Of course I do, yes. From what point of view? What do you celebrate? It's a midwinter uh, tradition to give gifts and caroling is a tradition that predates Christianity as well. So all of these things uh, I enjoy just like anyone else. What carols do you sing? Um, well, I don't personally sing any because I haven't got a note in my head. Uh, I do enjoy some of the ones that have religious co connotations because I like the melody. But I don't have to believe that the universe was created by a 2,000-year-old Jewish carpenter in order to enjoy the melody. Do you know what I notice about you, if you don't mind me saying, John? You know a lot about the Bible for a fellow that doesn't believe. I, I think, um, uh, without wishing to blow my own trumpet, Jerry, I've read the Bible several times. I've actually read the Catechism several times. Uh, I think I know a lot more about Catholicism than most of the Catholics that I come across. Uh, the reason is uh, when the state imposes Catholicism on my children against my wishes, then I take an interest in what it is. Um, so if no one tried to impose their religiosity on anyone else in this country, then I would take no interest whatsoever in anyone else's superstitions. But once the state tries to impose one particular denomination on me and on my kids against my wishes, um, then I take an interest in what that superstition is. And when you take an interest, it's not a very good one, you know. So the Catholic Church still um, wants to discriminate against gay people and discriminate against women, and it's worth opposing that. Now, 
You've come to the fore lately because of an issue that's raised its head. Your business is based in Dundalk. DKIT is there. Yes. Our big third level college. And there is a chaplaincy within DKIT. And many religions are catered for as well. It's just not a Christian or a Catholic one. There are others looked after there. Um, but you have an issue with the Catholic chaplaincy. Uh, well, that's not quite true. There's only one chaplain in Dundalk IT. Uh, the chaplain is a Roman Catholic priest appointed but by a Roman are, Catholic bishop. There are other faiths catered for. Not not on a permanent basis with a position. I, that is a fact. But there are uh, sort of uh, people brought in from other faiths if needed to deal with students there. Well, if, uh, if all of those denominations were treated equally in terms of... Um, uh, space being provided for all faiths and none, we would have no problem with that whatsoever. But what happens is 1.5 million euros per year is awarded to the Catholic Church from student services budgets uh, for chaplains. It's awarded in secret. Uh, it's awarded without advertisement, without tender. It's just the state handing over cash to one particular denomination. Uh, and we think that's misogynist. It's sectarian and it's not constitutional, and we are opposing it on that basis. Yet, in the census, and we'll have another census taken this Sunday, in the last census, yeah. people still return themselves in Ireland as the vast majority as being Roman Catholics. It is the number one faith in the country, it yes. is the dominant religion. It's 84%. Yeah, you know, it's quite big. So that, so mean, so that means there's 16% uh, of the country, let's say, who are non Catholics. Mm. And the question is, how many people's human rights do you want to infringe before it's too many? Uh, I'll give you the answer, Jerry. The answer is one. So if there was one person's rights who were infringed, that would be too many. Um, but the other side of that coin is you talk about 84% of the country being Catholic. Well, we can measure how many people are interested in Catholicism by the attendance at the uh, chaplain services. So to give you one quick example, Cork IT has 12,000 students. There's one chaplain who's a Roman Catholic priest paid 55,000 euros per year, and he reports average attendance at his regular services as four. That's four students out of 12,000. Now, let's say that was a Hindu monk, and the um, Cork IT allowed their local Hindu temple to appoint a monk and paid him 55,000 euros per year out of public money and there were only four observant Hindus out of 12,000 students in Cork IT, would you think it was strange to point out that this maybe isn't a good use of public No, money? I wouldn't think it was strange, but here's the thing. You, you take it to a, a pretty narrow example of the service and numbers attending. Who knows what that chaplain is doing through the college, through the year? Well, nobody knows. That, that's oh, yeah, the problem. But, but th well, then, we don't know. So he, that chaplain, or whoever that is, could be mighty busy, you know what I mean, with the student population, no, the, helping them, firstly, supporting them. Firstly, the way that he reports reports um, uh, his activities in terms of attendance at religious services is not dictated by me. That's how he himself mm. chooses to report it. Now, if you want to consider all of the other uh, activities that a chaplain might do, that relates to who is the best candidate for the job. And we don't know who the best candidate for the job is because no one was ever interviewed. All we know is who's the most convenient priest for the bishop to appoint. Now, the bishop thinks, um, and this is uh, by his own admission, all bishops think that the creator of the universe wants them to discriminate against women in ordinations. There are no female Catholic priests. So if you have these public jobs and allow a bishop to appoint a priest to the public job, you are de facto saying women cannot have these public jobs. Now, do we want to tell our listeners today that there are no female pastoral curs in Ireland who could do these kind of jobs that priests are doing? Um, I don't think that's true. I think uh, women in Ireland are perfectly capable of providing every bit as good pastoral care as Catholic priests are. I, I don't think a lot of Catholics would argue with you on that, and I think there is a... Well, the bishop would. Well, I understand that, but you know, the flock in general are looking at this, and there is a day coming when this is, this is a big issue today, you know, priests, and we see it in the Anglican... Uh, Christian denomination, what's happened there with women and bishops and priests as well. And it looks like it's only going to be a matter of time, but that's a bigger, bigger okay. question. 
I'd love to talk to you and continue to talk to you because you're a fascinating character. I have loads of questions coming in. Will you come back to me? No problem at all. We'll set up another chat here on Late Lunch, but for the moment, I have to leave it there. That was Thanks fun. a million. Thanks, Jerry. John Hammond. Thank you. The Late Lunch with Blackstone Motors.